Hello everyone and welcome to class. Today we are going to talk about cylinder heads and valve train, their design, purpose, function, all that fun stuff. Before we get into cylinder heads, I think it's important uh, to know that last week or the last video that we were in was engine short blocks. And in the engine short block, we had everything from uh, pretty much the middle of the engine below, our rotating assembly, the block itself, all that stuff. Well, before we move into air, our heads, which are up on top, there is something in between that we didn't talk about yet, and that is a head gasket. Head gaskets, um, or any gasket really, if we're talking terminology here, a gasket is going to provide a sealing purpose in between two components. So if I have two flat components that bolt up to each other, um, let's say, but I have fluid that go from one component to the next, I'm going to need to make sure that those two components are able to seal so those fluids don't leak in between. So any type of gasket is going to provide that sort of seal there. And, and we're not always talking fluids. I mean, we could be talking exhaust gases, pressures, things like that. And when we're talking specifically the head gasket, this you can see is a head gasket uh, that has space for four cylinders. Um, I could, this, this could be the second half of a V8, right? I might have two, one on each side. Um, if I have a just inline four cylinder, um, that that could be uh, inline four cylinder. It's not because we've got these two tanks here, but just to show uh, our head gasket's going to have a lot of different, um, there's gonna be holes that are going to allow head bolts or head studs to bolt our cylinder head onto the short block. And it's also gonna provide sealing surfaces for any oil galleys or cooling passages that are also flowing through. So our head gasket seals coolant, it seals for oil and inside of our cylinder where we have combustion happening, it's sealing our combustion inside of here as well so it can't escape out either into another cylinder, out into the coolant, uh, uh, any other fluids leaking out of the head gasket, um, out through the end of the head uh, and block surface as well. So <clears throat> our head gasket seals in a lot of different ways. So when somebody says they, uh, they blew a head gasket on their engine, that could mean a couple of different things. It can mean there's oil or coolant leaking out the side of the block in between the cylinder head and the block. It could mean that I'm getting coolant into the cylinder. It could mean that I'm getting combustion into my coolant. Uh, it could mean that I'm getting oil uh, and my coolant, I, I could get oil into my coolant, I can get coolant into my oil. So there's a lot of different ways that you can blow a head gasket. So um, head gaskets are generally going to be a beefier gasket than what you might see, let's say, for a valve cover gasket or an oil pan gasket. A lot of times those are usually like a rubber seal. Um, sometimes they don't have a gasket at all and it'll just be a sealant. Head gaskets are usually a multi-layer. Um, so you can see there's actually sort of a metal layer here. And then we have some extra layers on here if you can maybe if I turn that there you guys can see the raised orange areas there so there's different spaces that are going to seal for different things so most of your head gaskets are going to be generally like a multi-layer type of gasket so as I mentioned they seal oil coolant and compression um, from from leaking into each other now the cylinder heads themselves, uh, we talked about our rotating assembly, like I said in our short block video, where we've got our pistons, our rods, our, our crankshaft, um, and stuff is moving up and down, right? It's a reciprocating engine. What's the job of our cylinder head? So the job of our cylinder head is to provide a space, an area for air to flow in, and also potentially uh, spaces for, for fuel, which I will get into later, but our port fuel injection will usually inject right before our, our cylinder head. Um, like I said, I'll explain in a moment. Uh, and then it's going to provide sort of a tunnel for that air and fuel to go into the cylinder. Now I need to be able to control this, right? Because I can't always have air flowing into the cylinder or else I'd never be able to squeeze it. We just push it out, bring it back in, push it out, bring it back in. So. We've got stuff inside the cylinder head to 
allow for flow when we want it and not allow flow for when, when we don't want it. So our cylinder head is going, like I said, to control the airflow in and out. So we've got ports. Once we're done with everything, we've exploded it. We're going to push it out on our exhaust stroke. We've got ports and valves that are going to guide the air and exhaust gases out. So our cylinder head's going to consist of ports, valve seats. Um, valves are components that are also going to be installed in the cylinder head, but the bare cylinder head itself. So um, last video when we talked about short blocks, I talked a little bit about the block itself, right? The block itself was a hunk of metal that had cylinders cut out into it. Um, other components just were sort of installed in that block. Well, the cylinder head itself, without any components installed in it, is going to have ports, valve seats, and a combustion chamber. So let me sort of uh, go ahead and break down what that looks like. Here I've got a cutaway of a cylinder head. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that there. If I'm looking at the intake side of my cylinder head, I've got these ports, well, this one actually looks like a coolant passage here. I've got a coolant passage here. I've got intake ports here. If we look up on top, I've got studs that are sticking out. Those are for valve train components like rocker arms to mount to. Um, and even further back, I've got these holes. Those are called valve guides. Uh, valve guides can be pressed in um, or part of the casting. And if I turn this around, this is going to be our exhaust side where I've got exhaust ports and this is a wedge type combustion chamber which I'll get into in a slide or two here but these are our spark plug holes for our spark plugs to to screw into so our spark plugs are going to be part of our cylinder head as well now if I turn this upside down underneath our cylinder head this is the part uh, or the deck surface that bolts onto the deck surface of our block. So it's the bottom of our cylinder head. It's going to bolt onto the top of our short block. Now what I meant by uh, ports, I showed you the intake and exhaust port. So these ports that I was just talking about are, are going to allow air out for exhaust, right? And the intake ports are going to allow in for air and fuel. Now if I turn my cylinder head upside down, um, again, this section is called our combustion chamber. So if I turn that to the side, you can actually see how it sort of goes in there. So this is where a spark plug hole sits. Uh, so our spark plug is going to protrude here, and I've got two places for my valves to sit. So I'm going to go ahead and move a little closer here so you guys can see what that looks like. I've, I've drawn on here a lot. These little areas, these sort of circle areas, that's where our intake and our exhaust valve. So our intake valve is going to sit here, valve seat, and this is our exhaust valve seat. So what I've got here is a bare cylinder head, our combustion chamber. Um, here is where my exhaust valve is going to sit. So when uh, I've got the valve in there, see how it sits on there like that? That's a seat. This is the intake seat. We're going to talk more about seats here in a few. Oops, if I can get that in the hole there. So with the valves installed into the cylinder head, um, my intake valve opens and closes there. My exhaust valve opens and closes there. So back to our four stroke cycle. Um, our intake stroke, the intake valve is going to open and you can see how it's sitting up and off the seat here. Well, if I turn this around, and you guys can see my intake port, when this valve is open, air is gonna flow through in here and out and around my valve and into the cylinder, right? So our piston moves down, um, sucking in air and fuel, and into our compression, my intake valve closes, right? And we keep both of these closed. These are going to provide sealing surfaces so nothing can escape back this way once they're closed. And we are going to squeeze that air-fuel mixture. The spark plug that sits through here is going to provide a spark on our power stroke, right? And we're going to ignite that air-fuel mixture. We're going to blow it up. The piston's going to get shoved down. And when we're ready to finish this process on the exhaust stroke, 
our piston starts to move up, our exhaust valve opens. You guys can see that space behind the exhaust valve. Here's our exhaust port. Air is going to come out through our valve and out the exhaust port, out through what we call an exhaust manifold, and out through your tailpipe. So that's our cylinder head sort of just in a nutshell. Um, please excuse all of the dry erase markings trying to show where everything is uh, and stuff. But that's, that's sort of how this works. Now, that combustion chamber I just showed you where the valves were. That combustion chamber can be different designs. The one I just showed you was of the wedge type design. So the wedge type design in, in your uh, presentation on Canvas, you have this picture in much better detail than what you see right here. We can see our piston, our cylinder is here, um, and we can see our cylinder head up here. And what I just showed you, this is sort of a cutaway of what I just showed you. The shape of the combustion chamber is a wedge design. So both of my valves, it only shows one valve in the picture, and that's because they're side by side. So the combustion chamber I just showed you, those valves were right next to each other. They're neighbors, right? So this is just simply showing you a side view, which is why you only see one of them, because they're right next to each other. Uh, and my spark plug is on the opposite side of my valves. So this is a turbulent design. Um, turbulence of air is important because it helps keep our air fuel mixture atomized. When we start to get a little too turbulent, um, we start to screw around with our air velocity and it could impede on power. So you want a little bit of turbulence. Um, there's a happy medium that you can get with certain types of cylinder heads and certain chamber designs. When you start to get too much turbulence, we can do really well with uh, emissions, but we'll start to lose power. So uh, the wedge type combustion chamber design is a turbulent design. It, essentially, the wedge design is to help keep the mixture atomized to lower your exhaust emissions. Now what will happen is air and fuel will come in when we ignite the air fuel mixture. The problem with a wedge type, and when I say problem, there's ways around these problems, which is why you can have a Chevy wedge type combustion chamber on an overhead valve style engine that's, that's a newer design, and that sucker can make 500 horsepower and still get 30 miles to the gallon. There's ways to do it. So we have an ignition, um, event that happens and it has to take time to go across the cylinder to push down. So there are pros and cons of a wedge type combustion chamber. We'll get more into this in a cylinder head class. Um, the next type of design is what a lot of you guys know um, as a HEMI. HEMI is short for hemispherical. So hemispherical combustion chambers are exactly just that. If you think of a sphere, it's like a ball, right? Well, a hemisphere is a half a ball. Um, so your hemispherical combustion chamber is actually going to be almost like the top half of a ball, right? Like a dome. Um, now, that's what Dodge was known for back in the day. You know, you got a Hemi in that thing. They were known for making some pretty good power for their day because of this design. It's not near as a turbulent des design. However, um, it has really good airflow characteristics coming in and out. So what we've done with our valves is I now have intake on one side and exhaust on another, rather than being sort of right next to each other. And you can see our spark plug is now in a centralized location. So our spark event happens up here and it comes down as it's burning, which is exactly the direction that we want our piston to move in. So it helps out with a couple of other things too. Again, I'm really just briefly covering some things. Um, in this class because this is just an automotive principles class uh, but you can see uh, there there could be benefits especially with val valve overlap which um, i'll talk about when we get toward the end of this presentation where once i get to a point where both valves are open at the same time and you're like wait what may say what about the four stroke cycle video where you said intake is only open on the intake stroke and exhaust is only open on the exhaust stroke I wasn't lying to you, I just wasn't telling you the whole truth. There are, on the intake and the exhaust stroke, a brief period of time where we get an overlap period, where both valves are actually open at the same time. Well, on our uh, intake stroke, the very beginning of our intake stroke, the exhaust valve actually hangs open from the previous exhaust stroke, and it does help 
push the rest of those exhaust gas gases out as well as allow for airflow coming in or assist with airflow coming in. Um, so there's a scavenging effect that we get from our valve overlap. Again, we'll get into toward the end of this presentation or in the next cylinder head video that I have. So um, the spark plug being centralized is uh, shortening the distance that it has to travel, which is helpful. So this is a really great design. In fact, most of your designs these days are going to be a, a uh, variant of a hemispherical combustion chamber design. Um, most Hondas are a variant of a Hemi. A lot of engines went this way because it is a really good design for airflow. Which brings us to the next design, which is a variant of the hemispherical combustion chamber design. This is called a pent roof, and you can see it's still very similar. I've got uh, intake on one side, exhaust on the other. My spark plug is still centralized, except for instead of it being sort of like a half ball or, or a, a, a dome, um, it's kind of like a tent. Um, so the pent roof design is a little bit more angled, a little bit more steep to create a smaller combustion chamber design. So this is going to allow me to create a smaller combustion chamber, which is going to help increase our compression ratio. So we get more squish area. Um, it also is going to allow for another design, um, which I've spoken about, the overhead cam design. So if I have my camshaft inside of my head, I need space for that. And in order to make space for that, we sort of steepen the angle of our valves. And so now we've got a little bit more space up at the top for our camshaft to, to be put into. So um, it, it's also going to allow for a little bit larger valves, again, because the steepness. Um, what a lot of people will do with the pent roof design is they'll make multiple valves. So instead of making larger valves, they'll just do um, multiple valves but it, this design allows for more space for that. So there's the benefit of that. So the pent roof design is also very good for airflow. This is of the flat head design. So a flat head design, I mentioned already before when we talked about engine design, um, you sort of move this out of the way here. Our flat head design means everything, our valve train, all that, that's down here in our block. So I've got our piston and our combustion chamber is still part of our block. Uh, in the top, uh, you can think of a valve cover, but it's really just an engine cover because your cylinder head's almost non-existent. Um, we've got our spark plug, and that is it. No valves, nothing. Down here, where our intake and exhaust ports, our, our intake and exhaust ports are right next to each other, which is why it's only showing one port. There's actually two. They're side by side. This one happens to be showing our intake port. So our valve down here is going to get pushed down here at the bottom. It doesn't show, but there's a camshaft down here. And that camshaft is going to push that valve up when it's ready on the intake stroke. This valve is going to move up off of its seat here. Air and fuel is going to come rushing into our combustion chamber. And same process. It's the same four-stroke process. We're just moving components around a little bit. So that's a flat head design. There's not a whole lot of benefit. This is just an older design. I just thought I'd talk about it because you may hear about it, especially if you're into hot rods and, and old cars and stuff like that. It'll come about. So um, let's go ahead and stop here for this video because I don't want to make it too lengthy. We're already at 20 minutes. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about valve train, camshafts, and, and all that fun stuff. So I'll see you guys in the next video.